What's up, everybody? I want to tell you about Anchor. If you haven't heard about Anchor by Spotify, it's one of the easiest ways to make a podcast with everything you need all in one place. Let me explain. Anchor has tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. When hosting Anchor on Anchor, you can distribute distribute your podcast on listening platforms like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and more. So everything you need to make a podcast in one place. And best of all, Anchor is totally free. So download Anchor, the app, or go to anchor.fm to get started. And you know, I'm a veteran, so let's hear some more military cadences. What's up, family? You know what time it is. It's time for some hot topics. So first, we have up some basketball. You have the Mavericks beat the Suns 67 to 45. Well, in the overall, actually, they lost. At the third, it was 67 to 45. But the Suns came all the way back and beat them 107 to 105. So, wow. Big time on that. Um, 269 teachers from K-12 have been arrested on child sex crimes in the last nine months since 2022. Wow, these teachers, this has been happening a lot. Um, let's see. It was some news out of Florida. DeSantis is like busting these people here that have been like doing voter fraud like he literally showed up and to someone's house i'm gonna get the audio of that because i was just looking at that here it is voter fraud voter stuff when you weren't supposed to be voting maybe i didn't so what they talking they, about that's what you're, they... we're not the case agents but what you got to do they they have reduced your bond quite a bit it, it's two felony charges for voter fraud but they reduced it to 500 hundred dollar bonds so it's a thousand dollars total. Oh my God, man! What? So, the... Yes, sir. So unfortunately, right now we're gonna have to take you to jail, but you're get, you got a bond right away. You don't have to go to first appearance, nothing like that. So a bond? I didn't do it. Okay, so ma'am, we have a word for your arrest. For what? Good. How are you, sir? Oh my God! Hold on. Wait, wait. Let me see how my hands. We're telling him. He's right here. Right here. So if you could put your hands behind your back, please. Oh my God! You're so not ultimately, ma'am, you have a warrant. Okay. The warrant. No, listen, hold on. Listen. I know you're. Hey, you caught off guard. I understand. Right. So you have a warrant. It's for voter fraud. Okay. Hear me out. It's an ROR. You know what ROR is? Oh my God! You go in, you get booked, and then they're going to release you from booking. You can go right out. You're going to be right back out. Okay. Right out, right back but you have a warrant. Okay. Yep. I'm like, voter fraud? I voted, but I ain't fought, commit no fraud. Well, yeah, so th- that's the thing. I, I don't know exactly what happened with it, but you, you do have a warrant. That's what it's for. Okay. Oh, my God. Yeah, so I don't know what happened with that, but... Uh, oh. I got out, but God told me that I was... We are here to go vote for whatever comes out. I got my time. Yep. But the warrant was just made... Uh, Yesterday, so I, I yeah, I know. I, I I don't know, ma'am. I honestly couldn't tell you. Okay, so I gotta do I gotta do some paperwork, and uh, the quicker I can get the paperwork done, the quicker I can get you there. Okay. Hey, unfortunately, you got a warrant out. Okay. Warrant? Yes, sir. Want to put your hands behind your back for me? Yes, sir. Still no, but when I no one ever really explained all that much to me. I told the guys when they came out here, so that was it. Driver's license, please. Can you my driver's license? Yeah. The guy there asked me, he says, hey, can you walk? Okay. He says, hey, are you ready for the vote? I said, oh, I'm, I'm pretty sure I can. He goes, well, are you still on probation? I said, no. Uh, I got off probation like a month ago. He goes, well, then you can probably vote. Hey, just fill out the form and 
if you can vote, then they'll let you be part. If you can't vote, then you won't. And I'm like, all right. And there's your defense. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I, so I sounds like a loophole to me. So, uh, well, we can hope. It's because of the sex offender thing that you can't vote. So, I mean, the warrant is for the voting deal, I guess, but... I guess it's kind of all tied together. Yeah, I guess they're doing, like, some kind of roundup thing or something for all the ones that were within the county. Yeah, I had to do one of these this morning already. Oh, really? Uh, do you know the statutes for them? I... It doesn't say it on the... Let, let's side. walk over to my car, okay? Why y'all doing this now, and, and this happened years ago? I don't know. I, I have no idea, man. This is crazy, man. Y'all put me in jail for something I didn't know nothing about. Why would y'all let me vote if I wasn't, uh, I wasn't able to vote? This is wild, and I, I am... I mean... <laughs> I don't even know. I know they did a thing in Florida allowing felons to vote, but they are rounding people up down there in Florida. Like if you voted and you are a felon because Florida did pass a law saying that they could vote. But I don't know. This is going to be very, very interesting. I I mean, this is, you know, it's wild. I, I know like that's why you never answer your door for people. I do not I have no soliciting on my door for this reason. Um, yeah, that's wild. Um, let's get into another story. So FBI raids star raids a uh, star producer Tom em- Emmy winning producer James Gordon Meek had his home raided by the FBI. His colleagues say they haven't seen him since. Um, they say that he was the target of a raid but they don't say what it's for um he also resigned very abruptly and hasn't worked for months so i don't know what this guy's got going on they don't say like he's the abc news producer and he's won an emmy his name is james gordon meek so it is, in, it is like really interesting out here. It says that they allegedly found classified information on a laptop of a then ABC producer. Like, yeesh. Listen, man, they always watching. Y'all get too comfortable on these computers. I don't put nothing on my work computer at all. I don't trust nobody, trust no one. Um, let's see what else is even worth talking about. That news right there was enough, right? Let's see what else is going on. Once everything comes up, that is just wild, though. You got your basketball. The Astros won in their game 4-2 over the Yankees. That's This is just game one. Um, let's see what else is going on that we would even want to talk about. Because that's that was like already a lot that we talked about. We'll see here. We're definitely not talking about Kanye West today. Not at all. I'm over him. Uh, Let's see if we even want to talk about any of this crap. Because it's really kind of all crap. Let's see what's going on in our world news. Russian mercenaries make gains in the Ukraine's east. Putin declares martial law in four occupied regions as Kyiv presses offensive. Um, Let's 
the Ta Jake Tapper says economic alarm bells are blaring. Disney's prices are going up. Disney was expensive before. I don't even want to know what it is right now. Um, Princeton University is searching for a student who disappeared last week. The parents of the 15-year-old accused of killing five people in North Carolina last week says they're devastated. Around 12,000 suspected fentanyl pills inside of candy boxes were seized at the LAX. Wow, they really are trying to put this stuff in candy. Check your kids' Halloween candy this year, guys. Massachusetts authority accused women of unleashing bees on deputies during eviction process. Well, that's one way to get them out of there. Um... Florida man and son arrested for allegedly shooting at a woman sitting in a car they believed was a burglar. Wow. Iran is still being horrific to their protesters over there. Let's see. College wrestlers that were mauled by the grizzly bear attack. I actually shared that video on my YouTube. Um, if you want to go, let me know if you want to see that. I have a million funny videos on there. Um, What else, guys? Let's see what else we want to talk about that's worth talking about. I'm still, like, gasping at the fact that they rounded up all those people on that voter fraud down there like it was dangerous i really feel like whoever was responsible for telling them they can vote should be the ones that pay their 500 dollars because this is a wild place guys like people don't know no better they think they're doing a good service and they end up going to jail this is not even right they don't know no better I'm going through what I would like to refer to as ratchet news, but it's really nothing worth talking about that I'd be like, we should talk about this because because we definitely aren't talking about Kanye. I need a Kanye free day. I can't, I can't stomach another story about him. Mm. yeah let's move on to our tiktok stories because those are going to be more at least hopefully uplifting I, I don't even remember what i pulled today but i know they're interesting because i only try to bring you guys the most interesting stories so let's get into it extremely niche so i hope it finds its audience but if you're an office fan I need you to I need you to follow along with me here. I'm convinced and I'm looking for other people who are convinced too of the same thing that BJ Novak and Mindy Kaling are in a relationship and have children. First, his Instagram might as well be a shrine to her. He doesn't post another woman like this. And they know they dated before. Look at look at this. This is giving happily married. That's what it's giving. They're always each other's dates to events, which I know could just be like a Hollywood best friend thing, but name another name another duo that does this like this. Then her kids. She never posts them on social media. Never has said who the father is. Look at the back of her son's head. It looks like BJ Novak. I think she's not posting her children, like their faces and stuff, because it would be so clear that it's his kids too and also if you pay attention the skin color is lighter which indicates a mixed race child i'm honestly just waiting for the day that they admit that they've been clowning the world for the past 20 years and that they've been happily married with children because it's giving what it's supposed to give it's giving in love confirm or deny so if you watch the office ryan and kelly they were the couple that dated and bj novak actually created the office but yeah, I mean, I don't know. They might be a real life thing. I mean, the fact that BJ Novak wrote the show and plays itself in the show 
and his life is like a mirror of the show is interesting so they could be this girl did a deep dive into that so for all you office fans ryan kelly might have got married and had a baby who knows let's go to the next one <laughs> When I was in the church, I worked almost exclusively with youth. And when I deconstructed and transitioned out of spaces where I no longer aligned, the youth were always the reason why I stayed longer than I probably should have. And it's because I knew what I was leaving them to. As a child of the church, the black church in particular, I've been at those altar calls and I've shed those tears. And now when I look back at those moments, I realize they weren't always genuine moments of connection to the divine that led me to the altar. It was typically because I spent about an hour beforehand getting told that I was bad, that my thoughts were bad, that my desires were bad, that my natural inclinations were bad, how far I fell short of being worthy of God's love, that my very lived existence thinking speaking being somehow broke the heart of god and that all the good i thought i offered to the world meant nothing without jesus when you internalize that and there's a moment offered for you to rectify that at the altar of course you're going to go up and those tears often come from a place of self-loathing and desperation that's when the adults come and they're laying hands on you and they're saying prayers in your ears and you're scared and the other kids that you came to church with are crying all around you which makes you more emotional Need I go on? And we wondered why the same kids would raise their hands for salvation every week. It's because they were never given a chance to feel sure in their spirituality. We were so often shamed into coming to the altar. As I grew in leadership at church, I would get annoyed at kids who didn't take those moments seriously. But now I feel like I understand the kids who saw right through those manufactured emotional moments and were just biding time until their parents came and got them. I think it's past time for us to have more public and honest conversations about the harm churches do to the spiritual and emotional well-being of children. Which brings me to this tweet. It's always we need to heal our inner child and never children are an oppressed class in their liberation is important why do all of our inner children need healing i wonder if it's because children are oppressed when someone is oppressed it just means that they're subject to harsh and authoritarian treatment and they're prevented from having the same opportunities freedoms and benefits as others it's important to know that ideologies and belief systems can absolutely be oppressive and i think if we're being honest we would hold space for how this applies to so many kids who grow up in the church feel free to leave your thoughts in the comments and as always i can follow for more content so I agree to some of what he's saying about like, you know, especially I know the church that I went to, we we didn't get baptized until we actually understood what we were accepting. I, I know that our church was very big on trying to make sure you understand and all that, which who can even understand at 12 years old still? I mean, you know, some do. Jesus started that young, but like, you know, there's worse things that your kid could be. I just think in today's society, and, and as a parent, period, the community of church in a whole, you like to think that they're a good support system, especially if you're a single mother or father and that sense of community. So there's a lot of other things you could have your kid a part of. I'm not anti taking your kid to church. I think that you also, as parents, also have to have influence on understanding what they're receiving and what they're learning, just like you would if you sent them to school and you didn't agree with something that was being taught to them there. Um, I think that, you know, it, everything is manufactured, you know, unfortunately these days. And so there's worse things that your kid can be a part of. I also think that today's parents don't raise their kids and they almost need the church really because they kind of just like want people to raise their kids for them. And also I feel like um, when he said about, you know, kids being oppressed and all that, listen, like everybody's oppressed. Everybody, like if you are not rich and wealthy, then we're oppressed. Like we live in a society where our top four wealthiest people make more than the entire world. So I just like when people get onto this like oppression talk and all this stuff, like I kind of like, you know, what is this even doing? Like, because unless you really have a constructive way to fix this, I think, yeah, a conversation should be had. I think that that starts in your home. I don't think there's some outer whatever. And if you have an issue with how your child is learning about God as a parent, you take that to the church and whatever. But yeah, I mean, I understand on both sides, but I'm going to have to lean towards like, I still don't think it's a bad idea to take your kid to church because they could be worse places, honestly. And they need to have some sense of a higher power. And I think a lot of people don't have that these days. And that's why to me, this generation is so lost because they're, 
getting freedom to think and do whatever and literally that's not how the real world works unless you're never planning on getting a job or you're gonna go like live off the land and like do whatever you want yeah but in the real world mm -mm. you have to work for people you have rules to follow like it's a whole thing so um, oppression is lifelong my friend that's just my unbiased biased opinion on that <clears throat> let's go to the next one I'm a professional sex educator based in the United States, and I work with kids, teens, and adults, including sex educators and other people who want to learn to be a sex educator. I want to share three things about the vagina that the adults I work with are most surprised and most excited to learn about. Part three. As I said in parts one and two, please don't feel shame that this is new information, and don't shame others for not knowing it yet. Vagina fact number three. Contrary to popular belief and understanding, the vagina is not in fact a gaping hole or open tunnel inside the body. Even though we often see depictions of vaginal openings like that, or like that, the vagina is actually more like a stretchy muscular envelope. Stay with me here. So first, the opening. The vagina is not an open hole ready and waiting for something to go inside of it. Despite the name, the vaginal opening is actually more enclosed than open, and that's because it's a sphincter. Sphincters are ring-like muscles that can contract and close and relax and open, sometimes in ways we can control, but often in other ways that we can't control, usually because our brain is automatically doing it for us. Possibly the sphincter we're most familiar with is our anus, aka the butthole. That's one we can usually control. The bulbocavernosus muscle surrounds the vaginal opening, and this is the muscle that can restrict or relax depending on the person, depending on the body, and also depending on the context. This sphincter muscle is not actually naturally open, and when it seems tight, quote unquote, or closed, it's usually a sign that the, the vagina and the surrounding tissues are restricted and not actually receptive to something going inside. Sometimes this is mistakenly described as being tight, which is actually a super heteronormative construct and not a medical, sexual, or therapeutic term at all. Like the opening, the vagina is a muscular, flexible, envelope-like organ that is incredibly durable, flexible, resilient, and capable of literal shape-shifting. When the vagina is in a physically unaroused state, usually meaning there is not an influx of blood flow, swelling, and expanding the area, it's around three to four inches deep and not terribly wide. However, when the vagina is physically aroused, it can actually lengthen up to five, sometimes even seven inches deep, and it can tent open, which widens that envelope into more of a canal-like shape. This is one of the reasons why some people with vaginas find it enjoyable for something wider and longer than a tampon to go inside of it, because there's space for it. It's also one of the reasons why it does not feel good and sometimes even painful or burny for something wider or longer than a tampon to go inside the vagina when it's not physically aroused. And for the record, because this is often confused, physical arousal is not the same thing as horniness. It is a completely separate physical bodily process from feeling turned on, wanting sex, or feeling desire of some kind. So if anyone makes any kind of comment about your vagina being loose or being tight or considers your physical arousal to be an optional part of sex, they've got some serious learning and a lot of unlearning to do. And honestly, they do not deserve access to you, your time, or your resilient vagina. The resilient vagina. So it is not a hole that you can just, that's never ending. The whole throwing a hot dog down a tunnel because it's loose. One of my favorite jokes. It's not true, fellas. It's just not true. But anyway, interesting. Interesting vagina facts. So I wonder how she feels about Kegels because she said you can't control the tightness and the muscle. And whatever. We'll see. Did she ask something? But there you have it. Let's go to the next one. Last night, I really wanted some company over. I was feeling kind of lonely. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to invite somebody over having one night stand. Uh, so I called this dude. I'm like, okay, hey, come over and be with me. I don't want to be alone. Uh, but please make sure you take a bath and stuff, you know, because I know men don't have good hygiene. And he was like, you don't have to worry about that with me. Oh, no, nah, shorty. I'm like, okay, whatever. So he pulled up. He smoked a blunt in my house. And I'm like, okay, cool, whatever. Um, he didn't ask, but that's fine. It's fine. And um, before he laid down, I was like, you know, you just smoke. Can you please go to the bathroom and get some Listerine and kind of like wash your hands just to get that THC aroma off of you? Because I hate the smell of THC. And he was like, okay, cool. He went in the bathroom and he did it. So I'm like, oh, this is going to be a good night. This man got in the bed. This man was sink. It literally smelled like he had two pounds of weed in his pocket or something. I don't know. He smelled like onions, Burger King. I don't know. He was snake. 
So he was like, you call me wherever you're just to lay on the other side of the bed. Huh, huh. I'm like, look, I don't know what's going on. Um, but it's like every time I lean in your direction, I smell something and it's, it's making me very dizzy. Like, I don't know what it could be. And he was like, man, Shorty, you tripping? He put his hand on my face. I was like, see, uh, you smell my hands? Y'all wash my hands? I'm like, okay, well, it's definitely not your hands. It's something on your body that is, I don't know, it's just not too fresh. So I tried, I tried so hard to cuddle with this man. I could not. I was getting literally sick on my stomach. This man was stank, musky, weedy, whatever you want to call it. So I was like, um, okay. I called, text my sister like, please, 911, please call me and tell me you need to ride somewhere. She called me like, hey, girl, can you come pick me up from the club? I'm like, yes, I'm on the way. I am on the way. So I'm like, hey, you know, you got to leave, y'all. When this dude left, do you not know this dude text me and say, I'm sorry, I will be better next time? Why did you not bathe this time? Like, was I not important enough for you to take a bath before you got here? Um... I've never smoked marijuana before, but I would think, like, if he was getting really getting high, maybe he just felt like he smelled good. I don't know. How conscious are you of yourself if you're high? And I wouldn't give him another chance because that's bad hygiene for me is number one. Uh-uh. I can't stand bad hygiene. And now you got to wash all your sheets because your sheets smell like weed and onions. So that's what you get. Have a one night stand in a hotel like normal people. Like, what is a how is a one night stand inviting somebody over your house? I feel like that's too personal, right? Let's go to the next one. I promise I'm when I do a story time for you guys. Um, excuse my parents right now. I'm at home. I'm chilling. Don't judge me. I don't give a fuck if you do. But so basically, this is a friend that was um a friend from my childhood um i've trusted her for a long time so i didn't think she would do anything like this so basically you know i went through a little trial where i was down and i got some money um as a friend any friend would do you go pick up your friend and celebrate with your friend not to rub it in her face but i wanted to show her that we can both do this together as mothers and i trusted her enough to leave her in my car and i left my purse in my car and she took my car out my purse and took a picture of it. So I dropped her off and the next day I found out that four thousand and five hundred and eighty seven dollars was taken off my account. Um I proceeded to press charges. Um I kept calling into the police station. They act like it wasn't a big deal and things of that sort. So at this point I'm just tired, y'all. So I decided to post it on all social medias so everyone can know like what type of person she is she's very well known in chapel hill in durham north carolina um so and she also be making fake pages trying to scam people and get money out of people so y'all just be careful um but yeah that's my story yeah um i'm like you didn't find out to the next day i'm a serial email checker i think i check my email like several times a day and my bank would definitely alert me if somebody jacked me. And I would think her bank would try to, like, handle that issue. But I don't know. You can't trust people, man. And, I, yeah, I wouldn't leave my... I don't know. I don't, I'm trying to think if there's anybody I know that I leave my... I mean, my family, some of them, not even all of them. You just can't trust people, man. Stay woke. Let's go to the next one. I have not always been vocal about what I don't like Listen, during sex. People ass. aren't having conversations not about sex, not what they about like sex. and what they don't like. Sometimes bitches be staying with niggas because I can make him come and I like the fact that I can do that for him. When you can look at sex as a bonus, right? because everything else is great. Right. Ooh. You affirming are affirming your affirmations as you're stroking me. You don't understand that makes me come more than your penis. Yeah, move the mics. Uh-huh. They're coming in a Honda. Don't just stick your dick inside of me. Introduce yourself to my body. Like, I have fake, fake it. orgasms. I'm an expert. I'm an actress. I know how to shake, shake my, my leg. leg. Like, you're not doing it. Not. <laughs> so how do you please yourself? Do you use toys? I just started, yeah. Oh my God, which one? Yes. Okay. This is Megan. Sex Sorry. <laughs> When's the last time you had sex? Bitch, <laughs> don't you ever say six years. Come on, Meg. Not the dust off that pussy. What we doing? Y'all fine ass is all celibate and shit. No, for sure. Y'all don't know yet. <laughs> yeah, being honest with a person about sex is 
sex is definitely a mature conversation and I'm not saying with age I'm just saying like with what you're comfortable with who you know what you can talk about I mean some people can tell you like I don't like that I don't like this straight up but if you're gonna be in a long-term relationship with somebody you probably need to get that together because you know that's your 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 time together like mating that's the word I like to use it's not sexy at all but yeah if your partner is not and if they're secure which that's the kind of person you want to be with somebody you could talk to about these things yeah I agree let's go to the next one I lived with my boyfriend and his parents for three months and none of them knew that I was transgender I'm going to tell you how she found out so basically there's a little background on me um, I started transitioning when I was a teenager and, you know, I went through all the Um, I met my boyfriend here in New York and, you know, he was staying in Buffalo, but he relocated to New York. Homeless. Um, I met him outside. We eventually ended up getting together and he told me that he was going to move back in with his parents and he would love for me to come with. So I went and I didn't tell him, yo, I'm trans. He introduced me to his mom, he introduced me to his dad, I met a few of his siblings. And, um, you know, I was even laying in the bed, there were times that I was like, showering, my mom would come in, and, uh, and nobody had a clue. So one day, I had seen his mom's phone, and um, my phone was not working, so I logged into my Instagram, and I had two Instagram accounts, I had one for people that I know, and another for people that I don't. So I ended up forgetting to walk out. And his mom went to use her phone after me. And the next day, when I woke up, I just found her acting really funny. She was acting really strange. She loves me, or loved me, but then she started acting very standoffish, almost like, you betrayed me. Like, you could see the look in her eye. So, you know, I finally decide that I've had enough with attention, and I want to ask her, what's really good? Like, what's happening? What's going on? What's beef? So she's like, um, you logged into my phone last night. Do you know what you left on there? I said, no, nothing. I should have logged out. And she said, I went to your page and I watched your videos. I said, what videos? She says, of your transition. You didn't tell us. So then she's like, um, you were around my kids. You were around my grandkids. You were around my nieces and nephews. Why didn't you tell me this? I said, ma'am, listen, you is like I'm a threat to the public safety or something. I'm a regular girl, but I knew if I would have said something that I would be labeled otherwise and I would be dehumanized and treated funny. That's why I didn't say nothing. She said, well, you better get up and help clean up. You know what, if you're gonna be living here, you better get help clean up. She started getting real like, like, you know, snappy. So I'm like, I'm just gonna pack my things and go because I know that's the next thing you're gonna say. She's like, yeah, does my son know? I said, nah. She said, you know what, we gonna keep between us, but you better go. I said, okay. So what did I do? I packed my stuff and I left. I wasn't gonna play well. She, that was dangerous because not only did the parents know, the son didn't know, and you was all up in the house. And yes, trans is not a disease and she's not a, a trout predator, but you have to be honest with people, especially if, I mean, if it's not a secret and you're proud, I don't, I, I, I don't know. I know it's probably a difficult conversation to have with people, but like, wouldn't it be more difficult to ask somebody to live with you when you're homeless? I think to live with them. I don't know. I think she should have been honest because that could have turned out into a, a totally different situation. And the fact that she's kind of nonchalant, like, no, your son don't know either. Like, and I just left and I'm like, wow, because like, that's dangerous because a lot of people don't take that well when they find that out and you know a lot of people aren't secure uh, if his mother's acting like that just imagine what he probably would be acting like is be careful out there I mean I've done videos and podcasts on you know trans people and how they get killed you know because of that not being honest and forthcoming so be careful with that 
other than that, guys, what a crazy news day. Um, we'll see what happens tomorrow, right? All right, F is for family is signing off.